Well, what we're going to do today, we have a Harvest Right uh, JB vacuum pump, and the rear seal went out. So I had to order rear seal from Century Tool and Equipment. So I bought a rear seal and two gaskets, two O-ring styles. They charged me $28.82. They actually charged me $8.65 to put it in the envelope. So it wasn't the cheapest for three little tiny parts. So what we're going to do is put a rear seal in and the two gaskets need to be replaced. First thing we got to do is to take out the screws that's holding the front housing on. So we got to remove that first. So you got to get an Allen wrench that fits. And loosen the Allen wrenches. I always like to break them all loose just by a little. Before I remove them all. Then you have two on the bottom. That's got to be removed. Okay, they're all broke loose. Now I just use this tool to remove them. Okay, this is what this looks like inside. This is only three times since I had this off. So look how much scuzz is still on the bottom. And I have a nice filtering system. So this gets pretty scuzzy pretty fast. So now we'll remove that piece. Now the next thing you got to remove is this plate above the pump. Get it out of the way. And I don't have enough of torque myself with that. So let me get the ratchet out to break it loose. There. Clean the plate off. Just wipe some of the oil off just to be less greasy. This vacuum pump oil goes everywhere. Okay, now we have that part off. Now we got to remove this motor. This motor here needs to be removed. And just take the screws, <laughs> not even tight. Eh, at least they come out easy. Now you got to remove all these screws here. This is those long screws go from one end to the other. It screws right into the pump section itself. Well, we take these out, and we're going to yank on this motor. Do not separate the back of this motor, this part here, because if you do, I assume this has brushes. And if it's got brushes, and you pull 
out the rotor too far. And that means the rushes will fall down. And they're a pain in the ass to put back. So I'm just making sure everything's loose. Oh, well, it just slid right out. Okay, look at that. Slid right out. Just make sure you keep this motor together. Should, if you have an extra nut, you can put a nut here to hold it together. But we're going to have it back together in a minute, so I don't think i got to worry about it. Okay, so that's taken out. Now we got to... Take this gear off. Okay, got a flashlight. Okay, right here on the sprocket is an Allen wrench. And got to get an Allen wrench? I got one to fit. Right here. So now taking that little screw out. Well, they put a lot of Loctite on this screw. Well, I'm still working on the Allen Ranch here. This is a little dickens to get to. Okay. We loosen the screw up. The Make sure that this gear is even with the shaft, or at least how yours was originally. So hopefully that's loose enough. It just got to be broken off, broken or loose. I hope not broken off. Now the next thing we're going to do is to take the screws off the pump. Now we got to take these four screws out. Here, 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 and here. And there you go. It's a 7 16 inch wrench. I always use my little tiny ratchets because for some reason I break bolts. I always like to break things loose before I do any others. Okay. Okay. Like I said, I like to break the bolts loose first and then do it again to make sure they're even so there's no massive torque just on one. And I use the little ratchet because I break bolts off all the time. If I use a bigger one, they got any resistance at all, I'll shear them. So I don't want to do that. And if you say it looks like I just changed in the seal for the first time on the vacuum pump, you're 100% correct. So now I'm trying to get the pump off. So it looks like you got to remove that gear first on the other side before you can get the pump off. I got it pretty loose, the set screw. Okay, I'm gonna wiggle this one more time. See if I can get the gear off. And the answer is no. I hate doing this, but Just put a little wedge in there so I can put a little pressure on it. And 
then there's the gear here and there's the pump here okay now if you want to look at the here's the rear seal right here this is the first time I've done this it's not too bad here the channel's a little nasty and the rear seal's got a lot of goop right here in the bottom as you can see so we got to pop the rear seal out and put a new one in first I'm going to wipe it down just real fast I got a new o-ring for this so we can throw that out and um, got to make sure all these grooves are perfectly clean actually this old ring right here in between looks okay but I'm going to change it anyway right here I'm going to change that out we're going to change them all we're going to do one else do them all the seal is right here now how do you get that seal out that's real easy you find a socket that fits inside this hole Ah, there you go. And the uh, socket's right there. It's in the hole. It's hitting the seal. Now you got to make sure this is on a little ledge before you do this. We're going to just use this thing for the ledge. And just hit it like that. And it went through the seal. And it didn't do crap. Okay. I like that. What well, was funny? Socket like wasn't big enough. Okay, and get one a little closer. It works quite well when you find the the perfect fit. Well, this is a perfect fit. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we found a different socket that fits perfect in this hole. And uh, we're going to hit it out. Okay. There's the seal. The seal is most definitely out. And there's the socket that did it. Now you got to make sure that that area is clean. And make sure any of that gunk or anything that could be in this channel, but the channel is really clean. There's nothing wrong. I've seen some of these pumps where that channel was so bad it was unbelievable. I'm surprised that rear seal went out of it. Now what you need to do, get the new seal. First thing you're going to say, well, you get a little oil from your tray, wipe it on there. First thing you're going to say, which way does the oil seal go? Okay, now the rear seal, we're going to put it back in. The flat edge right here goes against the flat edge that's right here. Because on the inside the seal it's got like a spring and that goes on the inside next to the pump. So you just take it and you can push it right in there. You want to make sure it's all the way to it. And the way you can do that is with a big, bigger socket, you got to push right on the outer edge of the socket. Push that in. And then just push until the seal goes all the way in. Just make sure it's big enough right on the edge, not on the seal itself. Now we got the real rear 
seal pushed all the way down. So just make sure it's flush with the back here. You just got to make sure that it's all the way against it, which it is. Now, you just got to put this critter back together. Get your pump. Oh, there are a lot of scuzz here on top. There are actually a lot of scuzz right here. That's on the front. The aluminum part don't have it, but the steel does. So you really need to clean that off. So you don't want that stuff in there. And the way you can do that is just take a screwdriver and just scrape it a little like that. Just to rub it to break it loose. Most likely, that little bit of scuzz is what destroyed the gasket. The moisture content that comes off from when you freeze dry it, anything, is hell on these pumps. But if you can afford it, you can always buy the new Hardro Strike pump, the oil free one, that you don't have to go through this stuff. But I hate to tell you, I can't afford one. Too expensive for me. Yeah, it came out pretty good. If I could afford one, I'd be happy. That means I got a lot of money. Which I don't. Okay, now we got to put this round gasket, which is part number PR315, in this oval hole. I figured the price they charge, they would at least have it pre molded for the shape, but they don't. So you just got to take it and put it in. You got to make sure it don't pop out. A lot of times, which I might have to do, you can put a little dab of grease on the gasket. And then when you stick it in, it just sticks to it just long enough to get it in there, which I'm going to try to avoid. So when you put this back, you got to make sure this hole here matches up. You got to make sure this hole here matches up to that. And make sure that nothing moves. And keep an eye on the gasket. I'm going to get all four bolts started so everything's lined up. Okay, now what you need to do is just peek in this crack right here and make sure that that oval gasket didn't decide to jump out of that hole. Okay, it looks just fine. Because right now it's going to start touching. Okay, we're going to tighten this down. Okay. 
and we got the pump back on. Okay, what we have to do next is we got to put this gear back onto the shaft. Make sure it's even where you had it, where you tuck it off at. And this Allen screw. Okay, got the gear on. Now I just got to tighten it up. Problem is, I can't see the Allen screw. One more. Okay. That is tight. Now the next thing we got to do is put the motor on. The gear's got to go inside this green shaft. See this green part? Has to go on just like that. And that other one slides on that. So that's the coupler. So hold the motor tight. Now you got to match the piece up. There you go. Now it's sliding in. So take one of the screws from the back, push all the way up to the front and finger tight them so everything's aligned. Wiggle the motor back and forth so it takes all the pressure off so it's all equal. This wasn't that tight to begin with. These known to break if you torque them down too much. That's good. Okay, the motor's back together. Now the next thing we got to do is put this plate back on. That one has to use the Allen. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to put the Allen on the ratchet so I have a little more torque. Okay. That's more than enough. Okay, the next thing we have to do is put that gasket, the O-ring, on that cover. And as you can tell, it's just round. It's not formed or anything. To put it in this little hole and to bend it, we're most definitely probably have, and it's flat too, so you've got to have it flat. You can't have it twisted at all. And there's no way in high heaven I will be able to do that without using grease. So we're going to dry the channel off just to make sure it's all done and half clean from that slimy oil. I have a little dab of grease and I'm just going to put it on 
the gasket. Don't need much, just a, a little hair line all the way around because we're using it as glue. Okay. When all else fails, try to have gravity to help you out. gasket's just a smidgen too big too. It's almost all the way in. I just need to make sure it's even and the same pressure all the way around. Okay, you can bring the camera over so you can look straight down out the gasket. So now the gasket's all the way around. Now we're going to put the cover on. Yeah, before we should put the cover in, let's at least wipe the cover out. <laughs> so we're wiping the, the scuzz out of here. It didn't have, it was dirty, but it didn't have that much. Because that filter system that I'm using it's fairly decent, but it, but it still hovers there at the bottom because it doesn't drain right. Okay. Now we got that cleaned out. And let's put the cover on. Just don't wiggle it while it's got against the gasket. Always put the screws in just enough to start it so it doesn't move. Because see that lines everything up for all the screws. You never put one screw in and then torque her down because First, it puts a lot of stress, namely this cast aluminum, where that it could crack. So you just put the screws in, tighten down one on one side, one on the other. Because it has none on the top, I just do the two bottom ones. And then the two on the upper sides. And this Torquing it down, going back and forth. Okay. Now we're going to use the ratchet. A little pressure here, a little here. All the screws here probably has a torque spec, but I didn't get my torque wrench out because most people don't have torque wrenches, namely for small screws. Um, so if I use mine, then I'm not really showing you how a common person does it. Not saying everybody that's watching the video is a common person, but I think you understand what I mean. Okay, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight, that one's tight. Okay, this is it, we're pretty well done, you just got to clean it off. Fill it up with oil, hook it back up in your system, 
and hope we didn't mess up and it works perfectly fine. So I want to thank you for watching. I know some of this video was probably boring and I do need to make a correction. When I was looking inside the unit, I said, this isn't the worst I've seen. That, when I said that, I mean, it's not the worst I've seen in pictures, considering this is the first one I've ever changed a real rear seal in. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Next, I'm not a professional, I'm just a hobbyist. I do a little of everything. So, uh, you could probably do things better than I, and you probably can, uh, but this is just how I can do it. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe too, because I need everyone to subscribe, because with the new rules of YouTube, I have, you have to have a minimum of 1,000, and I don't have that yet. So please subscribe and watch my other videos. Thank you a lot for watching. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. When you get a chance, if you would please subscribe to my channel, that would help us out. Thank you.